Breaking news, another day, another long fight along the fire lines. This is a live look from Sky 2 as flames continue for a fifth day. And it's going to be a long night for weary fire crews as Santa Ana winds continue to blow and that fire danger has not let up. Well, it's also going to be another night of worry as evacuees wait to learn about the fate of their homes. All right, here's the latest. The raging and destructive Woolsey Fire in L.A. and Ventura counties has now burned 91,572 acres. It's 20% contained. 57,000 structures are still in its path. 370 homes have already been destroyed. Pacific Coast Highway is still closed from the Ventura County line to Sunset Boulevard. Now, this is a map of the areas under evacuation. Most of the evacuation orders are still in effect, however, Residents got the green light to return to some neighborhoods in Agora Hills and Westlake Village. Now, from those evacuations to those returning to their neighborhoods, some homes still standing and others destroyed. We've got the Southern California fire story covered for you. We begin with CBS 2's David Goldstein. He's live in Point Dew. David. Well, Pat, just in the last couple of minutes, the wind started to pick up here and kicking up this ash into our face. We are at Point Doom here in Malibu. Estimates dozens of homes in this area have destroyed, including this one here. You can just see what remains a couple of fireplaces in what was a multi million dollar mansion, according to residents here on the street. As we pan to the left there, someone told us that this person here had a recording studio in their house as well. You can't tell anything that's left here. This is the scenes around town as firefighters are still working. As firefighters continue to put out hot spots all along Malibu, the scenes of destruction are all around. In Point Doom, homes with just chimneys remaining, trucks seemingly melted right on the street, along with garbage cans, now mounds of plastic. Here, dozens of picturesque mansions are charred beyond recognition, but amazingly, some homes were spared. That's fine. Your That's house fine. made it through? Our house made it, yes. Robert Schultz came back to find his house untouched and has no idea why. I have no idea. It, it kind of like went around our house, it looks like, and hit every other house except ours. It's unbelievable. Others wrote it out and had a story to tell. The embers were just uh, falling helter skelter into people's uh, wood piles and fences, wood fences, and the eaves. The, the, the embers get up inside the eaves and just burn the damn house from the roof down. Just unbelievable. Just up Pacific Coast Highway, this is the Malibu Park area. You can see how fierce the winds were. These trees ripped out by their roots just across the street. That panel truck on its side. Here, burnt telephone poles lined the street as home after home was destroyed. Here, a backyard gym melted away. City officials say it'll be a few days at least before residents are allowed back. And the Malibu mayor, who's also a firefighter, understands their concerns. I know that everybody's really frustrated on the outside and they're trying to get back in. And I understand that. I really do understand all those people that are outside. I know they want to get back in, but there's still some danger here. And you can see what's left of this home here. Now, because of the concerns, Malibu city officials just put out a bulletin a couple of minutes ago. There will be a community meeting tomorrow night at Santa Monica High School at 7 o'clock where they're going to talk about some of the residents' concerns. People here we also talked to say that the water went off and on, on and off over the weekend and on Friday and Saturday when they were fighting the fires. That's some of the concerns of residents. And also, as we mentioned earlier, PCH still closed, so most of these people have not come back. Back to see what's left of their homes. We're live here in Malibu. I'm David Goldstein, CBS 2 News. All right, thanks, David. So sad. And CBS 2's Stu Mundell continues our team coverage. He's live in Sky 2 over Malibu Creek State Park. Stu? That's right, and this is the first time we've actually got Sky 2 this low where we could actually see the activity happening out here on Las Virgin. As you can see, the tunnel right there. This is one of those stubborn hot spots. There was a flare up earlier this afternoon again, but it continues to burn out here, and this is a spot that they keep been keeping an eye on. You can see the number of firefighters down there. Now, they actually were hitting this with water. Uh, just moments ago with their helicopter. They sometimes they're just letting it burn to clear some of that brush, but you can see all that fos check out there on the line. Now this is only one hot spot that we've seen out here in this entire Woosley Canyon fire. Right now though this is a spot where there's a lot of activity. Now they started to put water on it. They really want to put this thing out. Live in Sky 2 over Malibu Creek State Park. I'm Stu Medell. Back to you two in the studio. All right, thank you, Stu. Well, tonight, the city of Calabasas is still off limits to homeowners waiting to learn if their place is still standing. 
Many who defy the mandatory evacuation order already know. CBS 2's Christine Lazar is live in one neighborhood where several homes have been lost. Christine? Yeah, we believe about 10 homes were lost just on this street, Parkmore. You can see one of the houses behind me here, a total loss, and their next door neighbor also uh, completely destroyed by the fire. I want to walk down here. There's some neighbors who live in this area who have been returning to survey the, survey the damage. Um, when you came back in and saw your neighbor's homes, you live just right around the corner. Can you describe what this community is feeling right now? I'm not sure I can describe at this moment. I just came here about 10 minutes ago. And understand that my house was literally saved by one of the neighbors, two of the neighbors that was here and, and putting the fire off of my roof and his roof. Um, you know, having a house with four kids at home and a wife to leave this at 5 a.m. and hearing by 12 o'clock that fire has already burned four houses and it's keep moving. It's been few rough days for us. And right now seeing what we're seeing is it's hard to take in. It's understanding this neighborhood. We live here for four years. I built my house here, and it's not easy. But um, I think that this time the neighbors came together very strongly, and I think we're going to get out of it stronger than before. It's going to take time. And looking on the positive side, we're going to have some new houses in the neighborhoods in a few years from now. So. And I heard from one neighbor, he said that he was on his roof, literally hosing down his roof and hosing down his neighbor's roof. The people who did stay tried very hard to save these homes. Correct. And that neighbor was saving my house. That's what he was talking about. And also had my next door neighbor as well was saving his and his other house while putting the fire behind their house because those three houses kept on going with fire on the flames on the, on the hills, which right above them is the backyards of other neighbors. So... People stayed here. It wasn't so smart to do so, but in the end of the day, they became the heroes for us. So, All right. And the firefighters, too. Thank you for talking to me. Thank I'm you. sorry for what has happened to your neighborhood. And before we go, I just want to walk you through this neighborhood so you can see the amount of devastation. Those two homes, a loss from this fire. And as we walk up, before it gets too dark, I want you guys to see it's home after home after home. Home. And I know there are a lot of people watching the news right now that they came back into Calabasas. There are still, you know, down the pipeline. There are homes that have burned and fires. And we are experiencing some difficulty, as you can see, with uh, Christine's audio there. We will get back to her when we can. But we're going to tell you about some people in Bell Canyon right now. They're getting a first look at the damage there. They were allowed back in their neighborhoods for a few minutes today. And CBS 2's Dave Lopez is live at the top of a cul-de-sac on Wrangler Lane in Bell Canyon. Dave? A very chilly night. The wind is not as bad as it was at the 4 o'clock hour, but every once in a while it gusts up and it has gotten very, very cold here. And as long as this wind is blowing, that is not good news for anyone who wants to get back here soon. Over my right shoulder, what used to be a home, gorgeous view from the top of Wrangler. The home is gone. It's about 50 feet down into the canyon. And you can just imagine, at the height of this fire, everything you see behind you, ablaze with fire. Oh, pure agony. We watched uh, the neighborhood burn on the news. We did not see our house at the time. And for these people who live in Bell Canyon, it's the last thing they ever thought they'd be doing, waiting in line, waiting because the winds haven't died down and there's no electricity in their neighborhoods. They're waiting for a police escort, 10-minute time limit to get whatever you can out of your house. That is, if you have a house still left. Is this something, ma'am? For the Ahmed family... Their once beautiful 6,500 square foot home on the end of Marlboro Street, a home where they raised their two young daughters now in college, nothing but memories. I left with the house totally intact, but I left all the doors and op open for the fire department because they said we need to be able to get in at any moment. That was Thursday night, and then Friday, late morning, the wind shifted. We're under the impression that it was going to be a save, and I guess it was just such a ferocious fire. The next door neighbor's house was completely consumed by the time I got here, and they wouldn't let me in at that point. But with the police escort, they were there today, trying to salvage anything. There wasn't anything left. I didn't want to get everything through text anymore. I wanted to be here and get, like, the visceral understanding of what actually happened. Ahmed told me that after the initial shock, he fully intends to rebuild. The owner of this destroyed house, didn't want to go on television, told me that she watched her home burn while watching the news. This woman said... She was watching the news, couldn't recognize her house, 
and then couldn't watch anymore. We watched up to a point and we said, let's go to bed and, and so we can think in the morning. <laughs> she can laugh about it because her home was saved. According to the fire department, no official count yet in Bell Canyon, but at least two dozen homes destroyed. And then as you look around as to what this fire destroyed, you take a look at this picture, a structure, all wood, under construction. How did the flames dance around it? The moon over Bell Canyon, and you can see the blue skies, what's left of the of daylight here. Of course, that was a far different picture on uh, Friday when we were up here. But again, the key for the people who want to know when can I go back home again, whenever somebody turns off this wind gauge. Reporting live from Bell Canyon, Dave Lopez, CBS 2 News. Yeah, Dave, we can hear it. All right, this was uh, quite a scare earlier today, a new fire in Simi Valley. This erupted this morning along the 118 freeway in the Santa Susana Pass. But firefighters jumped on it pretty quickly. They closed a stretch of the freeway, got drivers to turn around as an air and ground assault moved in. They briefly evacuated Box Canyon and Lake Manor. It was a precaution. Firefighters successfully kept what they're calling the peak fire to only 20 acres, and no property was damaged. That's good to know. But yeah. boy, this has been annoying, that red flag warning, Jeff, because it's extended for another day. So some of us were just, you know, you can't get too much rest. Let's go to Garth Kemp for a look at the conditions. Garth? No, there will be some relief coming away. I'll we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But right now, still very, very low humidity out there. That's even one of the big issues with, of course, uh, the winds blowing offshore for us right now. But that's what the humidity looks like. Still single digits. Quite a few spots were offshore, but the winds are not crazy right now. That's the good news, at least compared to what it had been. Uh, before we're averaging you can see there offshore over by Santa Clarita 12 miles an hour these are sustained winds you get them a little higher a little lower depending where you are uh, through the area these are some of the gusts we are predicting by late tonight early tomorrow morning you can see they're picking up but still not 30 35 miles an hour offshore they're going to strengthen up yet again for us this evening but boy it has been a wild ride I saw coral trees big mature coral trees not burned snapped like about nine of them in a row uh, up into Malibu over the weekend. So it has been a vicious wind weekend there. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about a change and possible rain in the forecast for Thanksgiving. All that coming up in just a little bit. Back to you guys. Well, that's a good word, rain. All right, we are compiling videos of neighborhoods on CBSLA.com so you can try to check the status of your home. You'll find the database. It's on our homepage. And a lot of damage and devastation means a lot of people are going to need help. That's why CBS2 and KCAL 9 are partnering with the LA Rams and United Way to help those impacted by the Woolsey and Hill fires. And right now, you can donate online by going to CBSLA.com slash CBSLA helps. And then be sure to watch CBS2 and KCAL 9 on Wednesday for our live fundraiser starting at 11 a.m. All right, ahead at five, the loss of a comic book legend. Mm, how fans are remembering iconic superhero mastermind and Marvel Comics visionary Stan Lee. Plus, a Malibu wine safari mascot affected by the Woolsey fire. We'll tell you how Stanley the giraffe is doing tonight. Oh my God, oh my God, please God, please God. <laughs> this is terrifying. A local woman surrounded oh by God, fire escapes. See her fight for survival. 